Okay, so what we're doing now is moving on to area study two in unit three, which is an economic issue. And the first thing we're going to look at is inflation, and then we'll look at how it affects employment. So what is inflation? A situation where the general level of prices are rising. And the most important part here is general level of prices. Simply because one item goes up, oh my God, my cherry wipe's gone up, that's not inflation. We're looking at an overall picture of all prices. Okay, so what causes inflation? Well, there are two main types of inflation or causes of inflation. The first one is what we call demand inflation. And this basically is inflation caused because aggregate demand goes up. People want more goods, and it's a natural thing that because if people want more goods, there are shortages, suppliers can't supply all the goods, prices go up. That's just natural. That's a natural thing with suppliers. Anyway, if you can't supply and people want your goods, put the price up. Okay, we've all seen the, uh, the equation here for aggregate demand. I expenditures increase rapidly, and therefore firms want to make more profits, so they'll put their price up. So here we've got a, a normal supply and demand with inflation. Here we go. We have our price here. We have our national income here, aggregate demand. For some reason, demand goes up. So the demand curve is moving to the right. Now these are important things, particularly in exams when they ask you what's happening. Don't forget to write in. The demand curve moves to the right. The demand curve shifts to the left. Write these things in. These are important. And just a simple, the demand curve shifts to the right is worth one mark. Okay, so the demand curve shifts to the right. We have a new demand curve. So we now have a new equilibrium point. Therefore, the price, in order for the equilibrium point, a new one, the price has gone up to P2. So here we have a price rise caused by a shift in demand. Okay, so it's demand inflation. The next one is what we call cost inflation. This is where a production cost rises. Generally, it might be a labor cost. We recently had a minimum wage increase. Uh, it could be government charges going back to the carbon tax introduction on July 1st, 2012, or raw materials or whatever. For some reason, some, some production cost of the suppliers has gone up. Now, as a supplier, you can pretty much do one of two things. You can either cop it yourself, cop the cost yourself, and you reduce your profit, or you raise your prices. You pass that price rise on. Okay, so prices have gone up due to an increased cost. So unlike demand inflation, this type of inflation can occur any time. Demand inflation occurs because demand for a product goes up. Just because demand for a product does go up doesn't mean there will be demand inflation. Remember we are talking about macro, so we're talking about aggregate demand. Usually because people have a lot more money. So the previous graph showed the national income. People have more money, so they're out there spending it. So aggregate demand overall. Whereas cost inflation pretty much could be anything. The Reserve Bank could raise... Uh, raise interest rates, uh, we said, you know, raw materials could go up overseas pretty much. So again, going back to our supply and demand graph, remember everything comes back to supply and demand. So what we've got is, so supply is going to decrease here, so we've got a shift to the left of the supply graph because they're going to want to supply less because it's costing them too much. But what happens here? Well again, our equilibrium point moves and therefore our price rise goes up. So we have a price increase. Again, why do we have a price increase? Because of the changes in supply and that's been caused by an increase in costs. So remember, two types of inflation. The demand inflation is an increase in demand, causes the prices to rise due to shortages, etc. Or cost inflation, whereby an increase in cost of production affects supply and that also forces the prices up. Okay, right up. We have inflation targeting. Inflation is seen as being bad for an economy. I don't necessarily believe it is because inflation does show that the economy is growing. So it reduces the purchasing power of money. So if I can buy a bag of chips this year for a dollar and with inflation next year, I'm still earning that same dollar, but now that packet of chips is twenty. I've lost purchasing power on my dollar. Okay, it makes local producers less competitive, and we found that over the last couple of years by the increase in internet sales of overseas goods. If incomes do not rise by the same rate, workers can be worse off. The government and the RBA set an inflation target rate, and they're usually looking for 2 to 3%. And this is why you'll hear a lot of people, the re recent uh, complaints from the teachers and various other groups, where they're saying, oh, 
We're getting a pay rise and it doesn't even meet inflation. So the government's offering pay rises of 2%, but inflation is going up by 3%. You're actually losing 1% there. You are, your purchasing power is diminishing greatly. So the pay rise is completely ineffectual, so to speak. Okay, so rates of inflation above 3% tend to cause concern. We like growth. As I said, I think inflation can be a good thing because it shows that the economy is growing. However, when it gets up to 5 6 7%, or back to the good old days of the 80s, 8%, it means the economy is growing out of control. It's not sustainable and it is completely uncontrollable. Hopefully at this point the RBA will step in and take corrective action and usually, as we've all known, we've discussed before, they use interest rates to do that. So it's their main weapon. They'll tackle inflation. They'll either lift. If they think inflation is too high, they'll tend to raise interest rates, therefore controlling the spending or trying to reduce the spending of businesses and consumers. Measuring inflation, well the main measure is the CPI. Now, this is important when it comes to your exams. Note that there are two types of CPI. There is the headline CPI. Okay, it's a measure based on a basket of goods and services purchased by typical metropolitan households in the major capital cities. It's called headline CPI because that's when you pick up the Herald Sun or Sunday Telegraph, that's what you read. That's what they issue. Oh, here's the, here's the CPI figure of 3.5%. Because therefore inflation is growing by 3.5%. Okay, it is not a completely accurate figure because it does not cover all goods and services. Perfect question that shows up a lot in exams is what is the problem with the CPI? Well, the first part here, I believe, is this part here. Okay, it's only in major capital cities, so therefore they're ignoring the country. They have they don't take into account any cost changes, uh, goods and services, whatever in ca in um, in rural areas. Um, and the second one is with, with their headline CPI, it doesn't take into effect those out of ordinary things that happen to us every now and then. So what we do then have is an underlying rate of inflation. That does adjust for volatile factors such as droughts, cyclones, seasonal movements in prices. Going back to the cyclone Yazi a couple of years ago where the price of bananas went from $2.99 up to $16. Was it because of demand went up? No, it was simply because of the cyclone which affected supply. Okay, so if you went round and had a look at a number of items because of the cyclone and prices of a lot of fruit and vegetables went up, we've well got to adjust that. You're going to say that's not a natural price rise. It's out of the ordinary. So you know what? It'll show up in the headline CPI, but what it won't show up is the underlying rate because it'll be adjusted and it'll be taken into account for the underlying rate of inflation. Therefore, that gives us a more truer or real um, a sense of inflation. Oh, that's my quiche cooked. Um, so, yeah, we call it underlying, but if you want to call it another one, call it real rate of inflation. You, you know that we always use the term real for real GDP to say inflation has been taken into account. Well, you know what? We can have a real rate of inflation where it takes volatile factors into account. Right? Gives a truer indication. Okay, so let's have a comparison overview. We have headline CPI, is the price movements in all goods and services contained in the CPI. Underlying inflation removes the prices of various goods from the calculation. Gives a truer rate of inflation, more realistic picture. Many ways to estimate underlying inflation, the two approaches most commonly used by central banks are exclusion. So with the bananas and a lot of the goods and services with cyclone housing, they just take them out of the picture. They don't even include them because they say that's completely irrelevant. Or what they can do is they can trim them down. They can say, you know what, people are still going to buy these things. So instead of the price of bananas at $3 a kilo, it was up to $16 a kilo. That's pretty silly. So it's not going to be set. So you know what? We'll bring it back and we'll still accept that there's going to be some small change and we might make it a $350 a kilo. So they've trimmed it down. They haven't excluded it completely. They've just trimmed it down because they've realized that a, a greater proportion of the price change is through a volatile factor. Okay, so we've got here underlying and headline inflation, 2007-8. You can see that up to 2008-2009, we had high growth. Unemployment was about 4% in those days. There was an increased demand for our exports from overseas. Um, the country was also going through a bit of a severe drought. So we can see here inflation was quite high. We were spending up big, spending up big. Oh, there we go, bang. 
And what was this? We all know it was the GFC. Now, if we notice in all these areas here, and most of the areas previous to this, if you see a graph about previous areas to this, will show that the headline inflation rate is generally higher than the underlying inflation rate. But what happened here? The reason being is because of the GFC. So the headline dropped down. Well, you know what? That was a volatile factor that isn't going to happen. So it had to be adjusted. So therefore, it's one of the few times where the underlying inflation rate, actually, it was above the headline inflation rate. You can start to see later on, we started, we, okay, Australia started to get a bit of growth here. So the GFC hit. We had a complete slowdown. Aggregate demand dropped dramatically. And that's what's caused this very low price rise. Post-2009, well, we still had a demand from China for our resources, mainly our commodities, our mineral resources. Inflation itself actually rose to just be about the 3%. That's fine. But underlying brought it back down, and it puts it back in the target range. Same here. We're going to 2010, 2011. Inflation was still up. But you know what? Underlying brought it back down into its target rate. 2011, 2012, we'll sort of slow down again in the Australian economy, also within a lot of overseas economies as well. So again, that's why prices stayed low. And again, it was a volatile factor, so therefore underlying was actually higher than. Great question that usually pops up, and I'm not going to give you the answer, make you look it up yourself, is what happened here in these areas here, 2009, 2010? Why? particularly 2010-2011, why is such a huge drop down to underlying? Okay, um, and then the interest one's going to be for 2013, and I'm expecting this might be a question this year in the exam, um, to do with underlying and headline inflation. Don't forget the carbon tax came in on the 1st of July 2012. So price ranges may have been because of a government policy, which doesn't always happen. Therefore, if there are price rises, we would expect headline to go up, but underlying to bring it back down. Okay, that's pretty much inflation. Don't forget we've got cost inflation, cost of production going up, forcing prices up, or demand inflation. Demand, aggregate demand goes up, forcing prices up as well. Beautiful.